in modern day corporate world significant discussion on stock price valuation concentrates on price earning multiples or the price earning ratio now this price earning ratio is the ratio between a stock's market price and the company's earning per share let's see that uh, why financial analyst focus more on price earning multiples let's see the relationship between price earning and the growth opportunities the price earning multiple is a useful indicator of expectations of growth opportunities let's see how we have price earning ratio of firm a and firm b for firm a it is 8 times and firm b it is 11.4 times so apparently firm b have more growth opportunities than the firm a we know that the price is equal to value of the firm with no growth opportunities plus the present value of growth opportunities if we put the value uh, quantify this this equation we can see that p not is equal to 1 plus k 1 over k plus present value of growth opportunities if we rearrange this equation we get present uh, price earning ratio to reflect growth opportunities now we see the model which says that the price earning ratio is equal to 1 over k in 2 1 plus present value of growth opportunities over e divided by k now this equation shows the relationship between growth opportunities of the firm and its assets in place a high price earning multiple indicates ample growth opportunities for the firm and price earning multiples vary with growth prospects price earning multiples reflect the mar market's expectations on the firm's growth prospects analysts decision must not be subject to the market multiples in buying recommendations to their uh, clients now what these insights can be quantified let's see we have constant growth dividend discount model formula which says that p not is equal to d1 over k divided by g k minus g if dividend equals earnings then d1 is equal to e1 into 1 minus b which is a flowing back ratio so d1 is equal to e1 so in this particular case where dividend is equal to earnings so b is equal to 0 letting d1 is equal to e1 so dividend and earnings are equal to each other we also know that growth rate or g is equal to return on equity roe multiplied by p so we can substitute these for the d1 and g we will get p not is equal to e1 into 1 minus b over k minus roe into b so our d1 is replaced with e1 into 1 minus b and our uh, g is replaced with roe into b so we implying the price earning ratio we can say that p not over e1 or price earning ratio is equal to 1 minus b over k minus roe multiplied by b we see that price earning ratio increases with roe because higher roe projects give a firm good growth opportunities price earning ratio also increases for higher b as long as the return on equity exceeds k so if return on equity is greater than k then the price earning ratio will be higher than the flowing back ratio when roe is less than k the investors don't like retention the firm value will be fall and the flowing back will be on decline when e expected return on equity is greater than k the firm will be offering pretty reinvestment opportunities to its owners firm value will be increased owing to the increased flowing back of the earnings and where the return on equity is equal to the cost of capital or the k then the firm offers its break even reinvestment opportunities both inside and outside the firm to its shareholders this means that 
there will be no change in the firm's stock price and it will remain unaffected so conclusion here is that higher flowing back may yield higher growth rate but higher flowing back may not yield higher flowing back, uh, price earning ratio for the firm so now see what is the relationship between price earning and the growth rates there is a wall street rule of thumb that says that growth rate ought to be roughly equal to price earning ratio this means that price earning to growth or known as peg ratio should be equal to 1 now how it is equal to 1 let's see uh, we have rf a risk free rate of 8% market return of 6% flowing back or b of 40% beta of the firm equal to 1 and k is equal to we assume that k is equal to return on equity of the firm which is equal to 16% so uh, computing the value of g we have g equal to 6.4% and when we put these values to determine the price earning multiples we have an amount equal to 6.26% so we see that our growth rate is 6.4 whereas our uh, price earning ratio is equal to 6.23 uh, 6.26 or 6.3 which is nearest to the growth rate so price earning ratio in our, this case equals the growth rate that we have computed using our assumptions but remember that this rule of thumb may not work under certain cases for that purpose let's say another example now assume that long term T bonds have yield of 2.5% and we assume that K is equal to ROE which is equal to risk free rate plus market risk premium and that comes to in total of 10.5% so our G will be equal to 4.2% and putting these values into our price earning model the value come to 9.5% so we have growth of 4.2% and the price earning multiple of 9.5 times this means that price earning ratio and G are now diverging and the peg ratio is 2.3 that we have determined by dividing the price earning over the growth rate so this means that while valuing a company primarily through the growth opportunities such type of values can be very sensitive to the, the assess reassessment of the growth prospects now see the relationship between price earning ratios and the stock riskiness remember that high risk firm will have lower price earning ratio holding all else equal this means that p0 over p1 or the price earning multiple is equal to 1 minus b over k minus roe into b the resulting value is equal to 1 minus b over k minus g here g is replaced with roe into b this shows that riskier firm will have a higher k the price earning multiple will be lower because the value of the k goes higher the price earning multiple due to this high value will go down so due to this the lower present value of the expected earnings and the expected dividends for the riskier firm will be there and ultimately the current stock price of such firm and the price earning ratio will also be lower but there is an exception and that says that a small and risky startup company may have very price earning multiples due to higher growth opportunities and market expectations of this higher growth opportunities during their earlier phase